The only thing better than a paper circuit is a paper circuit that pops up. In this video, I'll show you how to add light to a double pivot pop-up spread. The double pivot mechanism features a parallelogram and two folded right angles, which are used to power a pair of moving arms. First, I'll show you how to build the mechanism. Then I'll show you a way to use it to help tell a story, express a concept, or add meaning to a pop-up scene. This model uses a mask, which is a piece of paper designed to conceal the mechanism, as a plane for building a circuit upon. Here, I've disguised the mask with a campfire scene and turned the arms into movable, roasting marshmallows. While this circuit only contains one LED, the mask is a useful place for building more complex circuits with multiple lights, as I'll demonstrate later. To get started, here are a few suggested tools and supplies. You'll need one or more circuit sticker LEDs in a color of your choice, conductive fabric tape, a 3 volt coin cell battery, a battery holder template or a scrap of paper, I'll show you how to use either, and you'll also need a ruler, scissors, pencil, scoring tool, a pen knife, a hole puncher, double sided tape, and an adhesive of your choice. For more details about supplies and links to downloadable support materials, please visit the link in the description below. There you'll find circuit diagrams, templates, and embellishments that you can download. For this demo, I'll be using a copy of the double pivot mechanism template printed on white cardstock and a color copy of the campfire props that I created in Adobe Illustrator. It's helpful to score it before cutting it out. I'll also be using a variety of colored cardstock as well as copies of the circuit diagrams. If you don't know exactly where you want your LED to be when you're creating a circuit for your own design, it's helpful to build a dummy model. Aside from the placement of the LED or LEDs, the rest of the circuit will be the same as it goes through a slot in the backing card and connects with the battery on the base card. In case you're wondering, I've backed this masking piece with a scrap of translucent vellum to help diffuse the light. All right, let's get started. The double pivot mechanism is a parallelogram. It has a half inch glue tab on top, a score line an inch down, with two 90 degree angles scored on each side, a third score line two and a quarter inches down, and a second glue tab at the bottom. The base card is five and a half inches wide and eight inches high. It's scored down the center and has a small slot cut out about an inch from the crease. For demo purposes, I'll be using white cardstock. But as a minimum, in creating your own designs, I suggest you use the same color of cardstock for the double pivot mechanism as the base card. If you prefer to work off template, the most important thing to mark on your base card is a line about an inch down from the center crease. Then you'll need to cut a small slot adjacent to that line. The slot will help you orient everything else. In addition to your base card, which you'll be building your pop-up on, you'll also need a backing sheet the same size. I'm using yellow for this. Carefully fold and score the mechanism. Dashes represent mountain folds and the dots are valley folds. But I'll be reversing these so that the lines won't show when I glue the piece down.
Using an adhesive of your choice, I'm using double-sided tape, adhere the bottommost glue tab adjacent to the slot you cut in the base card. It should not be covered. Ensure that the mechanism is parallel with the crease. Next, add adhesive to the back side of the top glue tab and press it down so that the mechanism lies completely flat against the base card. Now, when you fold the base card in half, the angles should fold inward. The next step is to cover the mechanism with a mask. This piece needs to be large enough to disguise the mechanism and wide enough for you to build your circuit upon. Adhere it with an adhesive of your choice, being careful not to cover the slot. We are going to be building a simple circuit with a single LED in the center of the mask. Since I know that I want the LED to shine in a certain place in my campfire scene, I'm using the piece to find the correct placement. If you don't like the way the hole punch looks, you can use a pen knife to make the hole a different shape. Position the hole over the mask and use a pencil to mark the location of the LED. I'm using a Chibitronic stencil to mark the location for my LED, and I'm using a red fade animating LED. But if you don't have a stencil, you can use a circuit diagram as a guide. Using the circuit diagram as a guide, the next step is to cut two pieces of conductive fabric tape and lay them down parallel to one another. The positive tray should be on the left and the negative trace on the right. I find it helpful to leave a little bit of the protective backing on them to make it easier to thread them through the slot. It's helpful to mark the correct polarity on the back side of the base card to keep yourself from getting confused about which side is positive and which is negative. Use a circuit diagram as a guide to orient yourself. You're going to be bringing the conductive fabric traces toward the center crease, but do not wrap around it. The next step is to adhere the yellow backing card. Orient the left side of the backing card so that the conductive traces are on the other side of the crease. Use a piece of double-sided tape on the crease to hold the pieces together.
Use a circuit diagram to orient your card with the slot to the left of the crease. We're going to be completing the rest of the circuit and adding a battery holder in the bottom right corner of the card. Don't worry if you don't have a battery holder template. You can use a scrap of paper folded in half. But if you have a template, feel free to use that as well. I'll show you how to use both. Fold the scrap in half and adhere it to the right corner. Use the circuit diagram as a guide to sketch out the positive and negative traces. A stencil is helpful if you have one, but not necessary. Complete the circuit with conductive fabric tape. Use the circuit diagram as a guide and keep the traces parallel where depicted to prevent a short circuit when the card is folded. Make a ball of conductive fabric tape to hold your battery in place. Or if preferred, you can use a foam ring if you have one. The last step to building your circuit is to adhere your LED sticker with the broad end touching the positive trace and the narrow end touching the negative trace. Ensure that your LED lines up with the hole. Now that your circuit is complete, it's time to finish building the pop-up mechanism. Using an adhesive of your choice, adhere the arms to the topmost angles marked with an X. Line them up so that the bottoms of the arms are parallel with the base of those angles. If using glue, wait until it's dry before closing the card. Although I did most of this off camera, the last step is to add the decorative mask piece and roasted marshmallow props to the front of the circuit layer. I made the decorative mask piece a little bit longer than the card base, so you can either trim off the bottom edge or fold it over and adhere it to the base card using double-sided tape. In this example, you can see that I've created a parallel circuit with three LED stickers instead of just one. Basically, the creation of the circuit is the same as with the simple circuit, everywhere except for the front panel.
I'm using a foam ring in this example, which creates a nice push button effect when using a thin three volt battery, such as a CR2016. And there you have it. I hope you'll use this mechanism to create your own light up pop up creations. To learn more about paper circuits, visit the description below or chibitronics.com.